people from Clutch. First thing I want to say is I've been a fan for years. I've met everybody in the dog. I'm never nervous. So I'm legitimately nervous this time. Oh, it's casual. <laughs> <laughs> so it's been a couple years since your last album. How long until a new one? I'm impatient. Uh, well, we're going to start recording it next week. Oh. So that'll most likely put it out uh, September time. Okay. Uh, and so it'll be concurrent with our touring plans for 2015. Do so. you know where you're going to record? Uh, we're going to record uh, with Machine, who did uh, Earth Rocker and Blast Tower, and he's relocated to, uh, to Texas. Oh. So we're going to be at a show here, I mean, in Austin tomorrow night, and then we'll go straight in the studio the next day. Same kind of vibe as uh, Blast Tower? Well, uh, we turned, this is probably the quickest we've turned out a record, uh, you know, in looking back to the past ones, not, not even been two years, uh, between Earth Rocker and Strange Cousins. Which was, Four. So it, there are, it does share some similarities. Um, I think I said the last time, but I've never. Oh, okay. Well, if that made any sense. It, would, uh, it went under my radar. Uh, it seems faster. Okay. Um, which I thought Earth Rock was fast, but this one even seems faster. Uh, we'll see. We'll find out shortly. All right. And just a question I've had for years. Your very first album. Mm -hmm. uh, I can never remember the long time. It doesn't sound like anything else you've got. You've got No Human Kindness yeah. and Benjamin Purge. A lot more kind of an aggressive, earlier kind of hardcore sound. Mm -hmm. What brought the change about? Do you ever play those songs anymore? Uh, we'll play a couple off. That was like two sessions. There was the first session that we did out in Frisco, and then we did another one in New York where you have this, most of the songs that we still play. Um, you know, some of those songs I wrote when I was 19 years old. Right. I'm 43 now. I get that. Um, but you're getting harder but, as you get older. But when, uh, well, I think it was a matter of trying to find out what kind of band we were, and I quickly realized this, at least lyrically, I'm not that aggro dude. Yeah. I'm not that person, and I'm not going to just go through the motions and jump through hoops to portray something that I'm not, because it's really difficult to be dishonest. It's a lot easier just to be yourself. And it was, it's more fun, you know to sing songs that are stories than, you know, some kind of adolescent angst. Right. So. And it sounds like it's easier on your voice, too. It's, you know, I, I will say this, is as soon as I started trying to sing melodies, I found it was actually harder. You know, it's easy to kind of fake your way through, you know, guttural uh, gruntings. But if you're trying to stay on pitch, um, and you're not born with that gift, it could be very challenging. So I'm still trying to learn. all the EPs and everything, I think you guys have like 18 albums. Something like that. But how do you choose what you're going to bring on the road and show us your gear? What was the okay. Road? I mean, well, how do we choose as far as the gear goes? Yeah, it's just, it seems like whatever amps and pedals you recorded that first album with and then all the way to now, that's a lot of gear. That's a lot of ground to go. Well, early on, it was a non-issue because I hardly played any guitar. Yeah. Uh, and I've slowly taught myself how to do it. Um, I had been playing... Um, a, a, J, a Marshall JMP, 1980 JMP, through uh, that Orange 212. Um, but it's very similar to what Tim plays through, because he was playing a Les Paul through a Marshall, and so was I. And uh, we, I find it's it's more interesting if you've got if you have two different amps. Uh, I play. Well, this is what I've been playing for the past couple of years. This is a 1968 Super Reverb. Uh, it broke down and I got a brand new one. I thought it would be a. It didn't sound the same. It didn't sound This thing shreds. And I've, did, I've learned that new ones with circuit boards uh, don't last nearly as long as these you know, point to point things that can stand the rigors of getting hot and cold and right. sitting in a trailer of a, of a bus. Um, I usually keep it very simple. I, if I could, I would just plug straight into an amp. I, I don't like. Foot pedals. That's why Al, our, our stage manager and tech, does a lot of that for me. Because my, my coordination is bad enough as it is. I'll tell you this: there's guys who spend thousands and thousands of dollars to just basically recreate these old black things. So. You know, it's it's a go-to. I mean, it's like my favorite guitar tones come come out of these kind of amps. Um, sure, I, you know, there, and there are some songs that we have that are more heavy metal that. I would probably be better suited to play through a Marshall and a 
Les Paul. And I, I still play the Les Paul for certain songs. There's a song on the new record that's kind of more metal. I'll play it through that. But um, I taken to okay, I'm trying to I'm taken to a uh, hollow bodies because they're super light. They're light. My back is not what it used to be. That Les Paul weighs about 400 pounds. And this thing, this GNL, uh, is is a lot lighter too, and it goes very well with the Defender as far as the tone goes. Well, man, I appreciate your time. Sure, let's do it. So obviously, the first question that anyone should ask you is, Tinsel versus the Grays, have you been inducted? Uh, no, I have never been inducted. Good. If you had said yes, then I don't know if I had a follow-up for that. <laughs> Hasn't Sammy Hagar been inducted? Doesn't he claim it or something? Yeah, I don't I'm think... I'm pretty sure it was Sammy Hagar. Somebody. Yeah, I remember reading that Sammy Hagar. Yeah. Well, he also, he can't drive 55. I don't know how that factors in with the new speed limit. Yeah. He's nuts. I'm saying that with confidence that I've never been reviewing this one. I think Jackie Gleason was also inducted. That I find more more yeah. All right, so you guys have been a band for like 20 years. You have like 17 albums. I'm maybe bludgeoning the numbers a little bit, but it's in that ballpark. That is a ton of space to cover every line. How do you, how's your rig developed over the years, and what do you, gets the job done. That's a lot of, you guys haven't like, you're not way far away from where you started, but you know, you were kind of hardcore and what do you plan? Uh, well, I go back and forth between playing Les Pauls and SGs as far as guitars go. Um, I love the sound of Les Pauls, but yes. the good ones are very expensive. So it really depends on how much money I have in my bank account at the time. And they're but, so heavy. Uh, yeah, I mean, that, that part of them, the heaviness doesn't really bother me. But uh, I go back and forth between Les, Les Pauls and SGs. I used a Les Paul 59 reissue on the recording of the new album, and now I'm just playing an SG standard live. And I feel like the tone is not too far off. So I've seen you use orange, I've seen you use a couple of Marshalls and 4x12s, I don't know, but what are you carrying with you? Uh, well, on this tour, I'm keeping it pretty simple. Uh, I just have a JCM 800, that's pretty much my main amp. And uh, also I found this other amp called uh, Lewis Electric KR12. Wired heads made in New Jersey, and it's uh, some sort of Keith Richards model, supposedly. It's a little bit forever. Mm -hmm. Well, I hope so. Well, it already blew up once. So well, uh, I'm pretty happy with the tone of that. What would you say it's going to? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It kind of has its own thing going. I feel like it sits. It sits more in the same place that an orange would sit in my tone. I a lot of my tone over the years is the combination of a couple different amps together. So, yeah, this one I'm using on this store. I'm using a Lewis Electric 40 watt combo and a 50 watt Marshall JCM 800. On the album, I played the Marshall JCM 100, and also I have a uh, 50s Fender Super Reaper. Not Super Reaper. Bassman. I take that back. So on the album, I use that same 50 watt head that I'm playing live. And the Fender Bassman also. And basically, the Lewis Electric is to take the place of the Fender Bassman, so I don't have to take that on tour. So it doesn't blow up. Yeah. I love the early bassmans. Like the, and you think about it like 62, 64, you get the 66 or anything. That's a rock and roll machine. Yeah. I don't understand how they went to play bass through it. But. Yeah, it's pretty ridiculous. It was a different time, I guess. Uh, yeah, I was pretty happy with the tone that I got on the album with that uh, with the old Fender and that Marshall. Well, it's hard to argue with either of those. Yeah, I was trying to keep it uh, heavy, but you know, a little more on the 
classic rock side in the last hour age. Yeah. So uh, the new album comes out in September? Yes, indeed. And I uh, actually talked with Neil about this back in like January, but he was saying that somehow it's even faster than the album. I just went blank on the Earth Rocker. Yeah, somehow it ended up uh, being a little bit heavier and a little bit faster. Uh, there's a couple vibed out tracks as well. But uh, yeah, we're just getting final mixes now and putting it all together. We still haven't sequenced the album yet. But at this point, I think all the members of the band are pretty happy with, with what we came up with. You know, and we're excited to have our fans listen to it. You know, look forward to it. I love all your albums. Cool. Thank you. Uh, that makes me think of a question. The uh, the first album that I can never remember the super long name for about speedways and drugs and whatnot. Yep. Hardcore or post hardcore. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. And then pretty quickly there's a shift, and then the rest of your your songwriting makes a little more sense together. Than that. How did that kind of that change come about? Well, the change came about because we went on tour. There you go. We went on tour. We started playing our songs, and we started deconstructing our songs. We started jamming a lot more because we got bored playing the same arrangements every night. So that was really the change between the first album, which came out in 1990. So, and the second album came out in 1995, so between those two years, just when we on. started touring, and uh, you know, we started growing up as musicians and listening to different kinds of music, and uh, you know, absorbed all that and let that come out in our songwriting instead of trying to just stick with a certain style. Because, like for example, the song with Chopin named Marcus, like we got positive reaction off that song, and you know could have just stuck with that style of songwriting forever just because we got a positive reaction from the one song and just trying to repeat that over and over. But we decided early on that we were just going to play what made us comfortable and what we enjoy playing. So at this point, many years later, time in advance, I find writing difficult. I don't find coming up with stuff hard, but I find getting with another person and making it all work difficult. It sort of iron itself out. You guys are so prolific, even with your other bands like Baker and McGreen, but I think you're involved somewhat with Lion Eyes. I can't quite follow that one. But. Uh, I can't really follow either. I played, <laughs> I played on a few of their albums, but I've never really been a member of the band. I totally thought you were a member, and then I saw you all live once, and you were in the building, but not playing. I was like, uh, I lost. <laughs> uh, yeah. Sometimes I'm not really motivated to learn the entire set from another band. That takes me a little bit of time, and sometimes I'm not really motivated to do that. Sometimes I'm too lazy to practice my own <laughs> songs if there's been a big break. But I, yeah, me too, actually. So is writing at this point, is it pretty second nature with you guys, or how does it come about? Uh, we just get together in a room and start throwing out riffs at each other, and whenever Neil hears something that's vocal friendly, you know, we keep that. There's a lot of stuff that ends up on the cutting room floor, for sure, right? And I would say the songwriting process on this newest album, we probably worked harder on each song and micromanaged each song probably more than we have any other album that we've ever done. And made sure we had the right parts and everything was you know, good for vocals. And, uh, I don't know how we do it. We just get lucky and we just keep working until all the band members like the song and we agree that we all like it. And there's a lot of times that we'll write a song and record it and just end up never wanting to hear it or play it ever again. And luckily we're all usually on the same page when it comes to material to dump and material to keep. Um, you guys recorded at the machine shop for this one and I realize it moved, but also uh, last time right? Yeah, we've recorded at several machine shops. I think any studio that that's, that producer machine records at is the machine shop. So this will be the third machine shop. The third album we've done with him, and actually the fourth machine shop we've worked at because we worked on a couple songs on Pure Rock Theory with him as well. So I heard, uh, I heard you guys say one time that you sort of preferred, and this was years ago, it may not hold up, you sort of preferred to all to be together in the room playing at the same time when you're recording versus sort of the uh, 
Pro Tools, here's my guitar part, you know what I'm saying. Cut the yeah. ace like it was kind of thing. And the machine shop, my understanding is he's very sort of Pro Tools kind of. He's definitely Pro Tools computer big time all over the place with the computer. But uh, with this album, we recorded all the basic tracks in the room together. Uh, we went, you know, fixed up parts, you know, fixed up, patched up drum parts and bass parts. But, you know, we laid down all the drums and the bass live with me and Neil jamming along with them. And then Neil and I went over and our parts over top of that. So this album is definitely more of an old school way of making an album than the past times that we've worked with machine. Well, Thank you. I'll still prepare it all, so hopefully it comes out okay. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. I'm sure it's fine. I have uh, uh, just just a personal curiosity question, if you guys think. So you've been in a band forever, and you know, um, you've been married forever. How hard is it to sort of maintain like raising kids and all that mess, like when you've got a tour to eat? Well, I'm a musician, so this crap's always on my head. <laughs> I've been married. I guess I have been sort of married forever since. So, uh, 2002, I guess. But I never had my first kid until I was almost 40 years old. Right? So I think the way I handled it was by just being completely crazy. <laughs> just having no grounding anywhere whatsoever. But within the past five years, I feel much more like an adult. Right? I get that feeling. <laughs> yeah. So. so basically, the first. Oh, 18 or 19 years of the band, and I was just completely crazy. Right. And not really, you know, thinking about real life. And once my first kid was born, it brought me back to reality. I'm, uh, uh you know, nobody knows, nobody's anybody's heard of, but I, uh, I'm, <laughs> you got a true to eat, so. <laughs> um, I've reached that stage where, like, if I'm going to continue, like, I'm, So there's this weird balance of like, how do I be an adult so I can have a family and still do music and art and have it not suck either, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because I really all want to do a tour, but I also would like to not be poor and have your family. Yeah. Yeah, that's really the hard part. We've been lucky enough to, in the past few years, at least since we've been doing our own record label, to make a good amount of money to live, you know, to where the touring thing doesn't really affect I get you. The happiness of our family. And we we may actually take a lot of time off too. We had ten weeks at home before this tour started, and we have another ten weeks at home after this tour. So we managed to take a lot of time off. I get you. I got a bunch of nieces and nephews that don't have any kids, and even just being away from them for six months at a time is always sort of Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I can't imagine if I would have had kids when I was in my twenties, I probably wouldn't be here right now. I would have had to quit get a real job, for sure. Well, if it's worked out, I'm happy that it worked out. <laughs> but I'm, I'm pretty happy about it, for sure. Yeah, it's great. Also, it's very nice to meet you.